Hello there, everyone. The Andrade here, and welcome back to episode 22 of our Astropolis Let's Play series, where today we are working on, uh, first things first, getting wireless uh, terminal access to our AE2 system, and then uh, getting our inscribers automated using Laser IO. It's our first exploration into Laser IO ever, uh, first time using it, and it's pretty darn cool, actually. I like it. A um, little complicated, but not really once you wrap your head around it. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Welcome back, my friends, to another wonderful gray day here in the world of the Andrada, where today, well, we have some projects that I would like to work on uh, and get done and see what's possible. So just haven't checked up here for a little while to make sure we're all hunky dory here. So just just double checking that. Uh, and we're good. We're producing anywhere between 500 to uh, 1K RF per tick right now. So we're really not we're not really using much power on our base at all. Like input is 400 power so we're using 400 rf a tick for our entire base at the moment so that's not too bad we're not going to complain now obviously as machines kick on and everything it uses more but i mean we have what that was able to make up to 40,000 rf per tick 20,000 something like that either way we're good um Anyway, so last episode we had left off. We had went down to our uh, server room here. Uh, we made our basement and everything, set up our chandelier. Everything is working great there. I did not make a second one. I don't really know if it's needed right now, so we'll kind of just leave that one chilling. Uh, chilling like a villain in case we need it eventually. Um, by the way, I set these up here so that I knew what my uh, blocks meant. I don't know if I discussed that last episode. So if I had a gray colored stone brick, that was a molecular assembler. And then asteroid bricks is pattern provider. That way I had a key for what I was doing because I was getting confused while I was up there. Uh, anyway, so today what I would like to work on is finish off last episode. What we were doing was working on getting ourselves our wireless access for everything because, well, I want wireless access to everything. I'm getting tired of having to come up here to do all my stuff. Uh, and then we're going to start diving into laser IO and automating my um, the calculation, pro the processors, uh, things from AE2. Because it's really the last step of things that we need to sort of really automate. Mate, um, before we can start going into our next planets and things like that um, and opening up our other portals. I do want to point out, remember I, back in like, I think it's like the first episode I mentioned or second episode, I added the morphing tool to the pack and I was like, okay, um, because it's such a great tool, makes it so I don't have to have all my different, you know, tools all spread around. Again, inventory management. Um, so I'm like looking at this. I'm like, oh, man, I forgot about this. How do I make this? Well, it's really not easy <laughs> even adding it to the pack in order to do this. Um, I don't have beetroot i don't have poppy i don't have tulips i might have beetroot do i have beetroot seeds i have beetroot seeds we could go that route with a garden cloche so that one's fine blue dye of course the green dye is the hard part we need to get cactus where do we get cactus from well nowhere wandering traders don't spawn in uh dungeon chests i have not seen a dungeon like a house or anything in this pack though i know that there's structures because part of the quest gave me like a structure thing but i think those might be on the moon i don't know uh, but we can't get cactuses. So how do we get green dye? Well, uh, green dye can be made in the painting machine with dye base. That's easy enough. Saw date, sawdust and clay balls. But first off, we have to get the painting machine itself doable. OK, then we have to get green pigment. And how do we get green pigment? That is the question. I have no idea. Uh, nothing here, because in order to make these, you need to have green dye. Nothing there. Uh, green wool. Green concrete powder, all of that requires green dye, so that's out of the question. Uh, I don't think it is possible. Unless I can use, like... Yeah, there's nothing that I can use to do this. Even the quests, like the quests have uh, the block shop here, and I have lime-colored stone and green-colored stone, but... Neither of those were on the list of um, allowable stuff for this, right? I couldn't throw this in there and get the green pigment. So I honestly have no idea how to get a green, a cactus, green dye to make this morphing tool. Uh, so, yeah, another project for another day, I guess. I'm going to have to troll through JEI and see what in the world I can do. Anyways, last episode we were left off and we had ran out of Fluix dust. So if we come down here to my uh, good old Arc Furnace, he is cooking up Fluix dust for us like a fiend. Uh, so we got that going. Ran out of stuff, I guess, though. I thought it was. Oh, I ran out of redstone, it looks like. 
Uh, Electrum Grit is in the uh, recipe, so we can craft Electrum Grit now. So really, there's not anything terribly too complicated here. But look, Fluix Dust for days, we won't have to worry about worry about that. I uh, probably should maybe cook some of that up into Fluix, though I do have 212 Fluix itself. Um, and I can I could cook that up. Eh, we'll see what we end up needing for this. OK. Fluix dust. Great. So now we should be able to craft all of these things. So in order to do so, um, we left off. I needed terminals. I made three of them. Good. I'm going to need three of these wireless receivers. So let's do one, two, three. Then I'm going to need three dense energy cells. I did go ahead and craft the energy cells themselves. 32, which is going to actually make me four. Um, but if we click on here, it's not going to. Oh, no, it actually used it. OK, so there's one. It was not wanting to use these earlier, but now it is. So there's one. Maybe I just have to do it one at a time. Two, three. It was telling me I didn't have these. It was saying they didn't exist, but it worked this time. So we'll take it. Uh, and that should allow me to craft a um, let's get the crafting terminal here. That's going to be you. Right. Yep. OK. So crafting terminal. Bam. Throw that in there. Now I should be able to make this. There's a wireless crafting terminal. Then I need to make the pattern access terminal. So another pattern access terminal. Bam. Which will allow me to do this one. Okay. Then the pattern encoding terminal. So we can encode on the go. So I don't have to worry about that. So that's another crafting table that we need. Okay. So we can just quickly click here. Pattern encoding. There's that. And then we need a universal terminal, and that's just combining these. So if I take any two of these and I combine them, we get the universal. Then I can throw the third one in there and get a universal, a universal terminal. All right, so that takes care of that. We're also going to need an access point so we can access this thing. And I did see this called a quantum bridge card. Uh, where did that go? I thought I had it bookmarked. I guess not. The quantum bridge card. No idea how this works. I kind of saw in a video someone using this to allow universal access does require a bit of power. We'll set it up and see what we can do. I think that goes into our terminal itself. And also the terminal does have uh, the ability to magnet things up. So we could use this instead of the simply magnets, which I did add to the pack. It doesn't really make a difference. I will make this because this is probably the intended route for magneting things in the pack. So we'll just go ahead and craft it uh, just so that you guys see that, you know, it is possible to get a magnet outside of the um, backpack. Uh, yeah. OK, so we need to get this charged up. And I, the only charger I have is from AE2. Is there any? Uh, yes, there is a this. This can charge this. So we can just pop this into here. Let it charge up. Now we have our terminal charged. OK, and the nice thing is it does act as a curio. So inside of our wireless terminal, we can't do anything because we have not linked it to our system yet. Well, how do we do that? Simple as placing down. How did I get iron on me? Placing down a security terminal so we can go ahead and uh, I'm going to. I don't believe either of these are necessary anymore. I had to bridge for those patterns because this I had everything bridging off of our ME drive, but this can this only supports eight channels. And so I had to run a dense cable here when we had all our pattern provi pattern providers here so that they could, you know, do their thing. Uh, but now we're OK, so I can place this here. And we're still only using five of the 32. So there's three more channels available for this pattern or this disk drive that everything can be bridged off of. Uh, but now we have a security terminal and the security terminal is mainly used for uh, if you're playing on a server and you want to share access to your AE2 system, you can set up these biometric cards. Uh, these guys right click shift right click on a player, I believe, which will link it to their uh, unique ID, their GUID for their player and everything like that. And then you can set up permissions like allowing the deposit, withdraw craft, break your op your AE2 network and things like that. And then you can put it in there and they have access to it. But for our purposes, all we need to do is take our terminal and put it here. And now it is linked to our network. Easy as that. So if I come into here, wireless is out of range. Ah, yes, because I need to set up my wireless access point. Right, right. So we can plop that there. Hey, wireless access point connected. OK, so what do you do? I don't know if the quantum bridge card needs to be like linked to. Like, does that just work? I, I highly doubt that just allows 
network access anywhere. And there's no guide. So I don't know how that works. I'm going to have to look that part up because I'm going to just be go out on a limb here and say go out on a limb, go out on a whim here and say that's not how that works. So anyway, uh, inside of our wireless crafting terminal, as you can see, we have access to all of our stuff. Uh, we are currently in terminal mode. If I click this button, it will take me to the pattern crafting or pattern encoding pattern access and then terminal mode. And this is the crafting terminal, as you can see, because we have a crafting table here. As you do operations in here, it does use power. As you can see, it just dropped down now, 99.88. Uh, so it does slowly drain the power. However, we can um, remedy that by getting energy cards. So I'm going to add that to our to-do list. We have room for energy cards. We can expand how much power this thing is able to store. And it's just like our standard crafting uh table right so we sort by number of items we're going to sort it by descending just like we had before all the other settings i don't think i changed any other settings here um so yeah that's basically how that works uh and the cool thing is this is a curio so we can take this we can put it over here and now we can access it without having to have it into our inventory to do so we do have to set up a hotkey so we're going to go into our key binds we're going to go a e r applied open wireless terminal uh yeah, I believe that's going to be the one that's going to allow us to open just the terminal. And I'm going to set that to tab. I always like to have that on tab. I am going to go see what else is using tab. Uh, list players. Well, we're not on a server, so I don't care. And crafting tweaks, refill the last stack. Don't care. Uh, and don't care. So tab it is. So now if I press tab, I open up my terminal and I have access to everything in my AE2 system wherever I'm at. Now, by default, this has a 16 block range. So we're going to put this to the test, that quantum bridge thing to see. Yes. OK, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to set up a quantum bridge network and then I have to put my little uh, the, the pearl like the singularity pearl here in order for this to work. I link a pearl here and then I link one to the quantum bridge and then that's how that's going to work. So in before we do that, I will put that on our to-do list. We will get a quantum bridge going so we have access to our system dimensionally, no matter what, we're gonna need that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get range cards for now. Uh, range, where is, Wherefore art thou range cards from AE? AE2? Range. It looks like this, right? No, it looks like something. Acceleration, inverter, energy, fuzzy, range is what I want. Range, range, range. Why can't you just be called the range? It's a booster card, isn't it? Booster. Yep, that's what it is. Wireless booster. Not intuitive, but hey, it's okay. Uh, Ender dust. I need to inscribe Ender pearls. Okay, so Ender pearl. Luckily, I have still quite a few of those. We'll grab 16 because I'm going to make a bunch of these so I can access this no matter where I'm at in my base. Uh, and I forget that I cannot access the side of the inscribers because my arc furnace is in the way. But we can go down here, pop in here, and put this in there. Inscribe it. And we can only do one at a time, but we could do this and get them all in there and get some ender dust going. Uh, because right now, I'm out of range, right? You're going to see it like flashes. It's trying, but it's out of range, so then it immediately shuts off. So I need to at least boost this up a bit. Um, and if I remember correctly, I can't take accelerate this, can I? Nope, doesn't do anything for me. We're going to automate this later today. Actually, like after I finish this project off, that's that's what we're doing. So. Wireless booster. Eight of those. So let's see. I know this is logarithmic how this works. So if we put it in here now, we are going to boost that up to 17. So it's not really that much more. Right. But if we put this one in there now, it's 18.8, 21, 24 and so on and so forth. So now we have a 38 block range that we do use more power each time we do that. Uh, is a 38 block range far enough though to be able to access from anywhere in our base? It does seem to be the case, so I like that. Though we'll let those other pearls cook up so that we can use them and get started. Okay, so that's wireless. We got that going for us, which is great. My next major goal, uh, 
is to get ourselves automated here with our inscribers. So that way we can set up, um, well, we can get all the calculation processors and all that stuff going without having to worry about uh, any of the crafting. In order to do so, I am gonna go ahead and craft myself um, some, uh, let's see, you're making the silicone, you're, you're doing the final product, but I kind of want to have separate ones for each of the final products so that they can craft uh, in series instead of having to wait for one of these inscribers to finish. So let's see. I also have one over here, don't I? You're just dedicated to making silicon. I could. I'm probably going to leave that one just making silicone. So really what I want to set up is automating these and then automating their resulting products. So I need another, um, I need one, two, I need one more inscriber is what I need then. And I believe it just takes a, a Fluix block, so I should be able to make that. Let's go teach Sticky Pistons to the system. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Ha. Let's go teach Sticky Pistons to the system right here from where we're standing. I don't need to go up there. That's going to take a long while. Ah, but I don't have the patterns. Granted, I could just make patterns, but it's all right. We'll come up here for now. Give me half of what's left. There we go. Now I can make all this happen. Okay, so Sticky Pistons uh, and Pistons are in the system. Yes, no, piston, now you are. All right, so that's pistons. There and there. Uh, and what am I crafting again? An inscriber. Uh, and go ahead and craft everything you need for this. You can go there, you can go there. I don't think I need any more range boosters, so we'll hold that ender dust there. Um, and we're good to go. Okay, so with that being done, we can pop into here and we are going to tear down everything we have going on here. Uh, we're just going to get rid of all of this. We'll set up chargers. We'll set up everything again later. Um, but right now we just need to we need a clean slate, right? I need to just clear out this area, set everything up as needed later. And then, you know, we can automate this later, probably using Ender IO again uh, or sorry, laser IO. Sorry. That's uh, the replacement of Ender IO right now. That's Direwolf's dream with Laser IO is to replace Ender IO or have it as a alternative replacement. Okay, so we're just going to clean up. We are going to, we will, yeah, we are going to need um, in, in, or a interface. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I meant to do that. Nope, not that either. That, there we go. I don't know how that got double placed. Okay, so we're gonna just clean up, right? Uh, okay, I don't have slabs in there, that's okay. Because we don't need uh, everything run down to our power flower anymore, right? We're, we have quantum entangler porters, we're gonna switch our power over to this. I'm, all, I'm just gonna probably break down that tower, that power flower, because we don't need it anymore. And then that guy can go, we can get rid of that, and we can grab one of our quantum entangler porters, and that's gonna be what's gonna you set up our power okay so in order to do this i'm kind of sort of thinking now i've never used a laser io before so that's why i have the book um oh i don't think i showed you guys i made i taught the system how to make pretty much everything laser io related um so that we can craft the thing. So I have a bunch of laser nodes available to me. I crafted a stack of those. Uh, in order to do so, you require laser nodes, which require laser connectors, which require logic chips, which require you to smelt the raw logic chip, which just requires clay and quartz. The only thing that was not really easily accessible is the clay, um, but it is. It requires water drops and dirt. Now, we don't have that automated, but we have thousands of them, so I think we're okay for that uh, right now. Outside of that, I made everything else available in Laser IO. So these are the nodes. These are the things that that allow you to access the items or access all of the different. It's the cable. OK, the laser node is the cable that you're going to hook up to the machine. Um, then there are the different types of cards. So you have your item card, fluid card, energy card or redstone card. And you also have filters. So you have a basic filter, counting filter, tag filter and a mod filter. And you have card overclockers and node overclockers. I don't know exactly. I'm assuming these make things faster, um, but we'll see. There's also a wrench and then there's a card holder, both of which I made. Don't know what the wrench necessarily is going to be used for, but we'll find out. Uh, and then the card holder, these cards do not stack. So inside of the card holder, you can stack them. Make sense? 
Okay. So with all that uh, being said and done, this is everything that we are going to be using for this. So what I'm going to do is take a chest and stick it over here in the corner and put all of this extra stuff that we're not using at the moment uh, inside of this drawer in this chest until we get the things that we need automated, uh, which is these three. Again, I do need the silicon press automated, but that press is just going to just do silicon. I just want to have silicon available. So I don't necessarily think I need to have uh, that one's going to be a separate automation outside of this because it's just going to run, right? It'll just make the silicone. We have infinite sand. They can fill up a drawer with it, and that way we have access to everything uh, uh, as needed for our silicone. Same thing, and then we'll have redstone pushed over here. Okay, so let's try and figure out how this is going to work. So there are three different types of processors, right? We have the logic, we have the calculation, and we have the engineering, okay? Each one of those is going to require the raw version to be made, which is going to be calculation. Um, what order did I do that in? Logic, well, so we'll start with logic, then we had calculation, and then we had engineering, okay? Uh, so we're gonna work on it this way. We're gonna have logic processors as our end goal, calculation and engineering for each one, okay. So we need ultimately six of these um, inscribers. So we're going to set this up like so. And I think I'm going to set the other ones on top because laser IO can access from any side. So it doesn't make a difference where those actually fate sit. We should hopefully this get this to work. Uh, so let's get power into these first. And that's going to be our first uh, our first way of seeing how laser io works okay so let's go ahead pop into our backpack we can put these chests away for now let's get all of this laser io stuff out and we need to set our nodes up so we're going to set nodes on each of these inscribers okay uh, and let's pop into our book and see well how do we get this started initially can't have dire wire without wires exactly right uh, so these are the blocks, laser nodes. Laser nodes is the most important block. It allows interaction. It's the cable that connects to the block. By using cards such as item cards, you can interact with adjacent blocks to transfer items. Okay. Um, each side of a node has three by three grid of inventory slots that accept cards. Okay, that's good to know. So each side can have uh, its own three by three. Use the buttons along the top. Shows how it works. Uh, interact with multiple inventories. Yep, from each side. Okay. Uh, can be connected together using the laser wrench, allowing connections between distant inventories, ranges eight blocks. If it is farther, use laser connectors. Okay. All right. So let's see. Laser node. We need to stick this on top of here. We need to get to our quantum entangle porter. We're going to set it to power. We're going to say power. You can go ahead and eject on the top auto eject so now power should be able to come out of this and then on this on our laser node on the down oh i like that it's able to access the card holder from here too that is nice we need to get energy out of this so how do we configure this probably like so yes okay so we need to say we want to extract power from the down and we're going to insert uh or we're not going to do anything else right we want a default that's where it's going to store, I'm assuming. So we're going to extract or we can overwrite which side it's on. Uh, transfer amount. A thousand per tick. Does that sound sound good? And it's on channel zero white for power. OK, so not what I intended. We want this to be on the down. So now if I put this in here, do we have a laser? Do we have power? You're extracting. From the down on channel zero. All right, so maybe now I need to, I need to bridge. So we need a laser wrench. You're gonna connect to there or shift right click. Okay. Oh, okay, I get it. Shift right click here, click to there. Okay, now you're getting power. You're gonna go there, there. Okay, this is linking it kind of like draconic. So now those are linked together. So this is extracting power, but none of these are able to insert power because I haven't put the insert card in. So first, let's see what direction are we facing here? This is south. OK, so if I take a insert card, an energy card and I go to the south and I put that in here, do we start getting power? No. I don't see this doing anything here. You know what? 
output, output, output. And that might not be the top, depending on the way I place that block. Nope, still not. Okay, the down, it should be extracting energy. If I'm, if, if I'm reading how this should work, which doesn't seem that complicated, let's go back to the beginning and let's look at our cards. Okay, energy card. Uh, use to send energy between inventory, such as machines and batteries. They have some slightly different mechanics. Um, they can operate every tick by default. You can overclock it to generate and pull more power. Um, you can limit how much it will only fill it up to 500,000 because you can fill it. it um, okay. Okay. So it doesn't help. Okay. Yeah, on the down, extract. You need to go here. And you are set to the power channel and you are ejecting. Oh, that's why the. There we go. Helps if I would have clicked energy the whole time. Hey, we got power. OK, cool. So now I need to do that with all these. So we're going to go to our energy card and we're going to go ahead and insert or I can just do this. Yes. OK, cool. So let's grab the energy cards and then I can just insert them on the front side. Now, that one's going to be a challenge, so I'm actually going to have to go into the GUI to do it, but that's okay. We can do this, we can do this, and we can say uh, on the south, insert energy. So now you guys all have energy? All right, problem number one, taking care of energy inside of them. Now, we need to craft. So I think what I'm going to have happen is we're going to have a chest sit somewhere. Um, so I think I put the chest in here. We're going to have a chest sit here. And that chest is going to be where uh, AE is going to dump the items that are needed for crafting. So in order to craft logic circuits, it's going to dump gold. And then it's going to put certus quartz. And then it's going to put engineering circuits. And we're also going to have... Um, hmm. I'm thinking maybe another chest to route. Because for the final product, we are going to need redstone. A pattern provider could be hooked up to here to say, OK, dump those. And then a pattern provider can be hooked up to here to say dump that. But then I would need in, uh, input in an input should be OK. Makes it a little clean. Okay, so pattern provider can come into here and it can provide these items: the gold, uh, the di the gold, the certus quartz, and the silver. So let's get some of that. We're gonna get gold, just one. We're gonna get silver, and we're going to get um, certus quartz. Okay, so that gives me that. So those will all end up coming into here by the um, by AE2. So here is going to be the sure this can be the calculation processor, which is our first one. Right. Or I'm sorry. Logic. I'm just trying to keep it in order here. Then calculation. Then. Engineering. So these are our presses and then the items are going to go into here. So what we need to do is set up a node on this guy. So give me a node. We're going to say, sir, you are going to be an extract node. Anything that ends up into this chest, you are going to extract. So let's go ahead and get our card holder, get out an item card. We don't need to configure all of them. And apparently I can do that by right clicking on the whole stack. Don't need to do that. Um, so we're going to configure one of these. We're going to say you are an extract. Uh, is channels going to make a difference here? I believe yes, because I want to filter which ones are going to go where. So I think the extract can be on any channel. Hmm. And then the inserts are going to be a specific channel with a filter, but the filter should take care of where things go. Hmm. Well, let's let's OK, well, we don't want channel. We don't want 
white, right? Because white is our energy for sure. So let's go to a channel of orange and let's see what happens. Okay. So we're going to say anything that comes into here, you're going to extract uh, and one at a time because these machines can only accept one at a time and you're going to go into that face. Okay. So anything I put in here should get extracted into here. Um, though I don't believe this has a, like, it has nowhere to go, so it's not going to do anything with it yet. So what I want to have happen inside of this logic press is where that is going to get inserted. So I'm going to need to grab another item card and we're going to say, OK, you are going to insert, but you are going to get a filter. You are only going to allow gold. OK, only gold can be insert into here and it can be on the channel one. Let's see if that works. Uh, on the south. Yeah, south side you are going to get this that we filtered. So now if I put this into there, does it extract? Oh, and then I need to connect these. Okay, uh, and then you, sir, are gonna get connected to here, here, and here. Okay, now did it work? Yes, okay, good. That went into there, perfect. Now we can do the same with the other ones. So we need, uh, two more item cards, right? Okay, so you are going to be an insert with a filter of uh, Certus Quartz. I like it being in the center. I don't know why, but I do. So that's going to be the Certus Quartz one, and then you are going to be an insert with a filter of the silver. Uh, and so Certus Quartz needs to go in the middle one, so that's going to be you on the south side. And I don't remember which one's which. Great. You are the silver, so you're going to be this one on the south side, silver. And then you are going to be this one here. Okay. So in theory now, if I put these in there, they will get put where they belong. Ah, but the channel is orange. I need to change the channel on those, right? Because I set up that channel specifically. Orange. And then orange south side okay now did it do it it kind of seems to be that it did yes good so now what we need to do is from there these would need to get extracted and put into um an inventory right back into our me system because i'm going to have two pattern providers i'll have one here and one here that way i don't have to worry about moving redstone from here to here or the silicone from here to here or just they'll just be two separate patterns i don't think that's going to cause too much issue i hope not at least it will require two cpus though kind of eh, i mean i guess whatever it's not that big a deal so we need an output chest and I guess we'll just this is going to take care of this first part of it for us. Um, and then from there, we will. Uh, we're this is going to be a two part episode, basically, is what I'm getting at. OK, so then we're going to put this here and we're going to say uh, all the items we want to now extract. So we're going to need a lot of these energy cards. <coughs> I'm sorry, item cards, basically. Uh, so let's let's do this. We're going to say one, two. I don't want to deal with these. I'm going to program all of these. So the important thing is here that these have to be extracted from the front, left, right, back or front. So we are going to extract it from the south side because this is the um, this is the south side of the block. So we want to extract from the south. So we're going to go into our card holder. We're going to say extract, but you're going to extract from the south side, specifically on the south side. And we'll set all of these to purple. So now these are all configured for purple and I can go ahead and insert them uh, on the south side again. So you're going to extract in this direction from the south and then insert everything into here. So we're going to say, do I need to bind these to here? Ah, that's the thing. I don't know. You're going to be an insert. Insert the purples into here. Yeah, you're going to insert into there. And then I guess link. 
those to those. Does that is that a two-way link? Is that gonna bridge both sides? Hey, look, it did. Okay, perfect. Printed engineering circuit came out of there. So now I need to go south side on this, and I need to put this guy. And then south side on this, we can put this guy. And that gives me those circuits. So now what I need to do is pop up here. I don't know why I went up top to grab stuff. I got to remember that I have this. We can get an import bus. And we are going to want a pattern provider. Luckily, I have extra still. And honestly, it doesn't. Oh, and actually, we. Uh, yeah. OK, I'm going to be wasting channels, but really, it's only it's in this room. So I really don't don't care terribly too much. Uh, let's go ahead and run this dense cable all the way down here, though. That way I can uh, hook up some blocks and stuff. And then that way we can end this episode. Uh, Dank, please. Thank you. There. And we'll just run it all off the dents. I have enough. It's not like it's expensive for me now. So whatever. Okay. So from there, we're going to have on this block is going to be an import. So we're going to go here. Um, and then we can do this and then I'm going to switch over to smart cables or glass cable. Well, let's do one more of this and then we can switch to glass cable. Okay. And then another glass cable is going to end up going here because we'll have another import bus there. Uh, I'm going to put the import bus here. So you're going to import everything that ends up in this chest to the network. Good. He's doing it. He needs to go faster. Then same thing over here. We will, uh, I'll go ahead and just put the, run the cabling. And I'm doing a dense cable here so that it looks better, right? We got one channel being used. Now we can go ahead and close that off. Good. Then a pattern provider can go here. And so now if I teach the system how to make these things, I say, OK, printed logic circuit. We are going to want this, but we don't want that. Right. We just want gold in printed logic circuit out. I say I want calculation circuit. Don't want that. Certus crystal in process or circuit out. And then finally you. So if I come over here and I go into my pattern provider and I say, hey, make those. So now if I request them. Uh, what was that circuit is what they're called. So I say, what, what happened? Where'd my helmet go? I don't even know how I took my helmet off. Okay. Let's not have that happen again. Uh, also, I don't know how those cards got put into that slot. I want crafting. Oh, you know what? I'm middle clicking in this and it's trying to sort the inventory while in the AE2 thing. So that's not going to work. All right. That's fine. I need to figure out what's going on there. Um, but a bit of a bit of a circuit circuit. OK, so I need let's make 64 of these. Yep. Available. And I want to make 64 of these. That's available. And I want 64 of these. That's available. If we come down there now, everything should be going. And remember, the inscribers can only put one at a time, so it's not like it's going to back stuff or anything, but it should be putting them in and then pulling them out. And then they end up over here and then they end up in our system. And look, there they are. Sweet. My next goal is to then do the top part, right? We took care of these. Those are automated. Now I want to go ahead and automate these, which is basically going to be the almost same exact process here, right? Uh, we're going to get a pattern provider and we're going to say, hey, sir, you need to provide these recipes. However, this time, instead of just of providing the circuit, it's going to provide logic, silicone and redstone dust. So it's going to have all of them. Now, with these, we are going to have to set up more of those extracts because these have to go into specific slots. So my lasers are going to be inserting the logic circuit into the top, the redstone specifically from the back, and then the um, silicone from the bottom, and then pulling out from the front. So it is going to require a little bit more configuration with our um, these guys, uh, not those guys, the other guys, the item. So I'm going to need more item cards for sure, because I only have two remaining. So let's go ahead and kick off, uh, you know, some item cards. Can we make 64 of those? I don't see why we couldn't make 64 of them. Go ahead and just make them so that way we have them. And everything seems to be working quite well over here. I like it. So what that means is next episode, we are going to come back and then we will automate the other 
half of this, right? We need to automate the second part of this, which is getting the actual circuits out of these machines. Uh, in between episodes here, I might just work on setting up that silicone processing. So that way that's done. I'll have it over here. Um, and then I'll probably just, uh, I'll set up a drawer and then I'll store those over there or in our drawer wall. Yeah, that's probably the best thing. And just have them get pushed through our system into our drawer wall. Um, and then that's going to be its own little separate automation, just like we had before. But instead, I'll just have an import bus on it instead of just dumping it all into a drawer from here. Uh, so we got that going for us. But I like this. I like the look of it, too. Overall, I think it looks nice. I could even make it even more compact. I could just have this instead of having these buffer chests or anything like that. Or I can move the buffer chest to the back. But I like it. It's going to work well for us, I think, so far. So anyway, if you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it. It really does help out the channel. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.